Ladies and gentlemen, this is Gail Morgan welcoming you to the Libertarian Counterpoints Knuckleheads of Liberty podcast. You've heard their point, now listen to the counterpoint. Welcome to the Knuckleheads of Liberty podcast. Uh, we are coming at you on July 7th, 2021. Uh, somehow managing to stay on our feet after almost six months of a Biden administration. It just seems to be hitting all the wrong notes. But uh, uh, and we, we've just uh, passed Independence Day as well. Uh, but before we get into any of the uh, news of the day, let me introduce you to our panel. In our upper left-hand corner, we have Leon, the word Brathwaite. Last word in liberty, he is a retired engineer from the state of California. In our upper uh, right-hand corner, we have our screaming eagle of freedom, Tim Everett. He is a pilot in the state of California. My name is Jason McPhee, and I'll be your host today. Uh, what's that uh, word? Did word want to come in there? I, it sounded like you were trying to say something. Or, oh, no. Okay. Never mind. No. I saw you leaning forward. I thought you, no, 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 no. I thought you were doing a Biden on us where you lean toward the camera. And <laughs> 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 it was some kind of a creepy, you know, way. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, 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 maybe Biden is getting, getting to me. So I'm trying, trying to be um, yeah, as creepy as he is. Yeah. Well, you know, as creepy as he is, this show, we're actually probably not going to have anything directly on him unless it indirectly ties to him. We're going to focus on sports on this show and some of the crazy things that are going on right now. Maybe not so crazy, but uh, just interesting from a liberty perspective. Uh, so the first item we wanted to talk about today was uh, that the Supreme Court uh, about a few weeks ago recently made a, a ruling on the NCAA. That's the... Uh, uh, National College Athletic Association, I think. Um, yeah. And essentially, they have uh, uh, sort of authority they, they've given themselves. And that's kind of what's in question over all these college athletes, over setting rules and the idea that they have to be amateurs. Um, and so the Supreme Court actually uh, took issue with that. There's a lot of college students who are out there who, I guess, are, are, are big money makers for their colleges. And they are saying, hey, why is it that uh, we don't get to make anything, but maybe some of the coaches are making millions and the schools might be pulling in some uh, big money and we're not able to make anything. And so the Supreme Court came down and said, yeah, this is a problem. And they actually uh, questioned whether or not the NCAA has this authority. And so they they, they peeled back at least part of it, and I think they've sort of invited <laughs> uh, uh, a, a case that can can peel off the rest of it. And so the NCAA, this could be a sort of game changer for college sports because now suddenly schools can offer, uh, a, a, I guess, actual uh, money or other benefits to students. You can, to they can offer, offer cash or in kind or the equivalent. Yeah. So, I mean, this is a, a real game changer because now suddenly – uh, it, it sort of pulls the facade off of this. And I, I, I kind of have some mixed feelings in, in both directions about this. But uh, uh, let, let me uh, open it up to you guys. What do you guys think about this? Well, well, I, I, I mean, I have a little problem here. But I'm like you, Jason. I have mixed feelings about this because these are supposed to be student athletes. These universities, especially Division I schools, have spent too much time on the on this many under the pro many of them end up end up with nothing at the end of their college career. But on the other hand, on the other hand, on the other side of this coin, is that these universities are making millions and millions of dollars off of the name and the image and the likeness of of these of these students, and. Given the fact that I'm a firm believer in the free enterprise system and people, I believe in people working hard and getting their, their fair due as a result of their hard work, I do not see why the NCAA, or especially these Division I schools, should be able to make millions of dollars off of these athletes and don't share it in some way with them. Now, should that be in actual cash? I don't know. But certainly in some form of scholarships that will allow them to finish up their education, even if you know they get through their four that initial four years, but after that, they probably will need to go on to a graduate school or even finish up an undergraduate degree or some sort of training that they can make them into productive citizens. Because many of them end up 
not being productive citizens. They end up without a college degree, without a professional career, and they end up with nothing after spending four years at one of these major universities. So I think there must be some mechanism of compensating these students, uh, these people, if this is the system we're going to live with. Because I don't like the system because I think there's too much emphasis on the athlete rather than on the student. So there must be some mechanism by which you can share the, the, <clears throat> the revenues. So overall, I do support the Supreme Court's ruling. Yeah, I, I do too. Uh, I think it's a good ruling. My, my first question is... Um, if they get paid in cash, they have to pay tax on that. But what about this cash equivalent stuff? Um, would they have to pay uh, taxes on, on a cash equivalent, uh, like yeah. a, a scholarship or something? Because maybe I need to be paid cash equivalent for my, my piloting services uh, in the future. I don't know. Uh, maybe a house and a car and, a, and stuff like that. <laughs> Ah, uh, never mind. Uh, anyway, uh, I think it's a good ruling, a uh, step in the right direction anyway, and um, uh, it'll probably be some conflagration or conflict, con uh, uh, some combination of <laughs> of uh, various uh, things that the two of you have been talking about, which sounds sounds good to me. Sure, indeed, indeed. You know, the, the, the one area I could see where maybe a school – should be able to constrain i guess the athlete a little more is is if they're not adults maybe you know but in this case we're talking about the ncaa i mean these are actually adults i, I just yes. seems silly that they they think they should have sort of this uh I, I guess idea like they're the parent or something looking out for these these guys and saying <laughs> another thing i have a problem with with all of this too is that a, a lot of school athletics are, are almost a facade, you know, by tying them to the college uh, yes. as though it's related to education. And in a lot of cases, it's not. I, you know, a lot of times there's been scandals. There's been so many scandals with football teams and others where they'll literally just bend and break every rule in order to make somebody eligible to play. And, uh, it, and it's just uh, kind of a facade. So. Uh, you know, it, and you know, if these were private institutions, I don't think I'd have a problem with it. But there's so much tie-in with government, with all the government funding and everything else of these these colleges, and a lot of them are state schools. And, uh, just, so just the idea that they're setting up this kind of uh, oh, uh, almost like a cartel or something. <laughs> you know? I don't know. I don't know. Getting to, to your point, Jason, about about. The, the, fa the facade of, of an education at, going on at these institutions. I don't know if you remember who Lawrence Taylor was. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. He it, went it, to it, Oklahoma State. Linebacker. Was it linebacker or defensive end? I can't remember. I think it was a linebacker. Back. But, yeah. but a, very, a, very, a very good one, too. A very good one. Yeah. Well, he went to Oklahoma State University, which is um, was, was a rival of my alma, alma mater, the um, University of Oklahoma. But by the time Lawrence Taylor supposedly left there after four years, he made it to the pros. He was very good in the pros and that kind of stuff. He, years after, he admitted he left Oklahoma State University and could not read. Yeah. Now, how the hell did this guy get to college? So, you know, this getting back to your issue of the, the facade of education, and this is my problem with all of this. There's too much focus on the athlete rather than on the student. I mean, I think sports is a good thing. In, in the environment of a university, it's a good thing. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to tear it down. That's not what I'm trying to do. But I think these Division I schools spend too much time focusing, focusing on the athlete rather than the student. I don't know how you could get out of a university, of an American university, and then years later you have to be admitting, but he did this in front of Congress, actually, admitting that he could not read. I mean, Jesus, Lord, that, that, that to me is... is tells you the full story about what what is passing for education for athletes oh. in these in these schools well I, I have a personal anecdote on this too i was uh i was on a, a college sports team uh, uh i was on a, a college football team for one year and you were on a college football team <laughs> yes I was Seriously? On a, a, a junior college college football team okay and, and uh and the reason i wanted to bring this up is because you know you hear about this kind of stuff with division one and and you know, the, these schools that have all this money pouring into them. 
well, you know, community college doesn't have any money pouring in, and yet the competition is so fierce that you see this kind of, you know, sort of fudging happening, even at a community college level. And I, I remember I was taking an interpersonal communications class, and this was one of them that they were, I, I didn't go there because I, I was on the football team at that point, but that's sort of how I connected with some of them. But, but there were all these football players who were taking the class, and they were all sitting on one end of the class. And, and there was a lot of people in that class who I, it was, a, it was an interpersonal communication class, a speech class, a satisfied speech class. There were some of them I never heard speak a word of English in the class. <laughs> and all the football players were all sitting on one side. And when the teacher would walk out during a test, out would come, you know, a little thing of, of answers. And, <laughs> and, and this was for a class that, like, like I said, literally it was for a communications class where some people I'd never even heard speak in the class. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, that's the, and so, I mean, if that can happen at a community college level, imagine what happens at, at a, you know, a, a division one, at a division one school. Sure. Exactly. Yes. Where there's, oh, yes. where there's oh, yes. real stakes on the line other than just, you know, the, 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 the what's there for the players and the coaches. Um, and what also happens is another corruption that, 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 I mean, the Supreme Court didn't address this and, 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 you know, we never spoke about it. Well, what happens is some of these wealthy supporters of, of the of the university, whether it is Oklahoma or Oklahoma State or whatever it is, some of these wealthy supporters do give uh, gifts and, and, and money and, 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 and cars and all kind of stuff to some of the athletes going to the university. And, you know, that's a little quiet thing that go on in the background. Sometimes the NCAA will pick up on it and they will make us think about it and that kind of stuff. They are a few very famous cases of that. But this thing go on in the background. So let's bring it to the surface, okay? Let's bring it out in the open. Let's let's do something, some mechanism whereby the athlete can gain something from the use of his name, his image, and his, his likeness and that kind of stuff. Let's, let's, let's bring it in the open. This well, underground it, corrupting, I, I say no to that. I really do. Well, and, you know, we, we can laugh about some of these stories, but when you talk about somebody like LT or... You know the, the the LTs that didn't make it to the NFL. Exactly you know, those guys, and they literally wasted all of these years of their the years they should have been building up their human capital to go out and get a productive job, and they're literally coming out with this fraudulent education where they can't even, like I said, read or or just just solve basic problems. It, it's exactly. Really, it's it's I, I really think that that part of the facade just has to end. But anyway. Uh, and another thing that happens also that 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 um, that is is well known also is that sometimes these guys you know they get injured career and in injuries in, in in their college years. What happened to them then? Or early in a pro, even if they do make it pro professionally, there's one well known case: um, Marcus Dupree who went to the University of Oklahoma first year or maybe it might be second year out of school, busted up his knee, his career was done. The last thing I heard about Marcus Dupree is driving a truck somewhere, somewhere in Louisiana, and somewhere in that part of, that part of the country. Yeah. This is the kind of things that happens. Well, yeah. you know, maybe if he could have made some money that first year, you know, that might yeah. help him yeah. out a little. Yeah. Sorry, sure. sorry, Jim. Go ahead. Well, I'm just going to put a fly in the ointment, and, and with the fact that there's significant percentage of these, uh, even after going through the pros and having a, a stellar, uh, multi-million-dollar career these um, a significant percentage end up penniless after yes. after they leave. So there's no guarantee that even if they do get paid, that these guys are going to be able to save it and you know, use it to uh, increase their human capital later on and so on and so forth. So um, may, maybe instead of uh, communication class, they ought to go into a, uh, a personal finance uh, class and, and, be forced to to actually study, and and do the test uh, with someone looking directly over them 100% of the time, uh, to make sure they don't cheat. So that uh, when they do leave, with their money they make from the NCAA uh, football team that they belong to, that they can actually utilize that in a productive way to uh, to increase their human capital and so on. Or you know, I really like the cash equivalent idea to. Um, you know, in, to be serious about it, 
you know, a, a way of uh, giving them future ability to attend trade school, you become a plumber, become a carpenter, become a mechanic, become a, um, a scientist or anything else that they want to become a doctor, a lawyer, an Indian chief, but, you know, some methodology whereby if they don't make it into the pros, if they get injured, if they blah, 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 then they'll have something to fall back on uh, for, for some kind of future. You pay them cash and they're 21 years old. They're going to blow it. They're going to blow it. Okay. Yes. Uh, and that, that, that percentage, I mean, I'm talking about people in their thirties, forties, probably no, no more than that, that are blowing millions of dollars. If they can do it, you're darn sure, uh, that a, a 22 year old, uh, grad, you know, or 23 year old graduating from college, <laughs> so-called graduating or leaving college, uh, can blow, uh, blow money like a uh, drunken sailor. Can blow money on blow. <laughs> oh <my goodness. laughs> Literally blow it. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah, I mean, you know, this is top down central planning and I'm not good at it. Okay. And I don't like it. But nonetheless, um, if I was going to centrally plan the future of a 22-year-old that didn't make it into the majors and had been playing football all this time, I would have a, a crude, a bunch of, of uh, money set aside to, uh, to utilize for, for an education, a trade, uh, something, something like that. I mean, that kind of appeals to me in a, in a better way. You pay them cash, it's gone. It's adios, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's up his nose. It's down a little lower. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's somewhere else. It's, it's in the pockets of all his buddies. Yeah. And, and so, uh, there you have it. <clears throat> well, well, speaking of, uh, just, uh, blowing things, uh, you know, I, I want to move on to our next story here and the, uh, Liam, could you pull that image up? Uh, the, uh, um, so, uh, essentially, uh, the the Olympics, uh, unfortunately, the drug war has sort of killed the the uh, dreams of an Olympian here. And it, you know, gosh, it's uh, a gal's name is Shikari Richardson, and she was looking to be a favorite to win gold uh, at Tokyo for the United States. And turned out that she had done a little bit of marijuana, uh, you know, so not quite blow as in the last story, but, <laughs> but still, it's. <laughs> Uh, it, you know, it's caused her to blow uh, this opportunity of going. Well, there's to the there's always the term "suck." Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, but 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 as far as things go, I mean, holy crap! I mean, this is the the uh, you know once again the the horrors of the drug war. Uh, you know, here this gal is, uh, you know, a, a great runner. She's at the beginning of her career. Yeah, she imagined she she must be a, an adult at this point, you know, uh, just coming out of school. And and here she is, the drug war. She does something that is literally on par with the alcohol that's being sold in these stadiums. And, that you know, we're, we're just going to toss her, her life aside, you know, on, on a garbage pile, uh, all for, you know, this, this horrific war on drugs. And the, the crazy thing, it wasn't even a performance-enhancing enhancing drug. Sure. Um, so, I mean, it wasn't even like she was cheating like some, she literally, and, and my understanding is she did the marijuana, uh, she says, because her mother passed away about a month before uh, the games that she was competing in. And that was one of the ways she dealt with her, I guess, anxiety of that. So anyways, uh, if you guys have any uh, thoughts um, on this uh, tragic story? Go ahead, Tim. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, hold on. Hold that thought. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you can say, okay, she knew the rules and she knew that it, she would, that would disqualify her. Okay. No, you know, so there you are. And the rules can be made. They could, they can make aspirin illegal if they wish. Okay. They yes. can, they can come down as hard as they want, as stupid as it may be, especially regarding a plant, you know, that, that grows naturally. Um, not even, I mean, aspirin, you got to manufacture that. So, um, uh, and aspirin could be uh, more of a performance enhancing drug than uh, marijuana, as they have dis determined, uh, because you, you, you lose, uh, you know, you have a little pain control with aspirin at least. OK, so um, but nonetheless, she, she knew the rules. But in my humble opinion, the rules need to be changed. And this is a tragic uh, thing. Um, 
and and again the olympic committee can can make as many stupid idiotic rules to rule out and leave out people that um are are really the best you, you really want to okay so a olympic committee news flash do you really want to see who's the best in the world at whatever it is they're they're competing in you really want to do that then um yes performance enhancing drugs should be illegal for sure because you don't want to see who's the best you know jazzed up on drug uh, athlete you want to see who's the best <laughs> athlete without drugs okay and marijuana has is, is not not the performance enhancing drugs that that i'm talking about here so so get a clue and uh allow people like this lady um to to enter it and and, and don't make such a big to do about a plant that grows naturally put there by god almighty himself <laughs> Okay, now I don't, I don't believe her story that she only did this because of the death of her mother. Okay, I sympathize. I with don't you. either. I, don't I yeah, that one I, I feel sorry about the loss <laughs> of her mother, but I certainly don't believe that story. Yeah. yeah. However, I'm, but like, like I think Tim, Tim kind of covered the point, but I think I'm two minds of this. On one hand, as a libertarian, I don't see why an adult can't use marijuana if they so choose. Okay, she's an adult. I, I mean, I mean, she want to put a use marijuana. I think. I think people use marijuana kind of stupid, but that's you know that's that's just me. But as an adult, she should be able to do so. However, you get back to what Tim said. She knew the rules going in, and if you know the rules, and the rules say you can be disqualified for this, well, you know, we have to live by those rules until the rules are changed. Mm -hmm. So, I I guess, but keep in mind though that at some point, you know, slavery were the rules, and some of these other things were were you know, Jim Crow was the rules. And it, to be honest, if somebody broke a Jim Crow rule, I'm going to applaud them. I'm not going to <laughs> say, hey, let's ruin your life because you broke yeah. the rules and you knew what they were. <laughs> so, but Jason, yeah. okay, fine. You're right. Slavery was legal. Jim Crow was legal. They were all horrible systems and all that kind of stuff. And we celebrate some of the people who fought against those things. We fought against, uh, fought against, um, we celebrate them now for fighting against it then. However, at the time, people's lives were ruined for breaking those rules. Seriously. Yep, if for instance, look at the underground, look at the underground railroad, which was which was which um was a real good network of people who helped slaves escape the south. If some of those people were caught, most of them were white, actually, the, the people, their homes and all that kind of stuff. Most of them were white. If some of those people were caught, they'll be in prison, some of them might have been lynched, all kinds of stuff would have happened to them. For breaking the rules, okay. Yeah. So I accept your point. I accept your point. <laughs> but if you break the rules, you have to pay the price. I'm sorry. Yeah, but J and Jason, that's it. I'm going to beat up on you too. That's comparing <laughs> apples to oranges. Yes. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't think so because ultimately this goes uh, back to what it means to be a libertarian. Do you own your own body or not? And she was putting okay, something okay. in. It was not no, no, at no, all. No, no, no. So no, I. Yeah. No, we. Well, no. now here's the here's the thing. If uh, first of all, last I checked, being on the Olympic team was not a right that everyone got. No, it's a privilege. You have to Good earn point. and you have Good to point. earn hard. You got to do hard work to make it on that team. And if that includes, you know, oh, forsaking marijuana, I'm sorry, you're going to have to do it. I don't agree that it's a rule. That doesn't matter. It is still the rule. And it was a private entity that did it. Okay. So, that does not compare to being a slave where you lose your well, freedom is, or is, the, the loss of the ability yeah. to vote. That, okay. that does bring up a good question, though. Is the Olympic Committee a private organization or is it tied to the government in some way? Because if it's completely independent of the government, uh, then I would agree with you. I mean, they're a private organization. Well, not, say it, you is, have to wear is, a, it is not. It is not. Uh, so it is a private organization, but it's funded by many state governments and, and the federal government, too. It's, it's funded. And, and that's the, the point is once this becomes a government entity, at that point, when they start, I mean, what if they said, oh, you cannot be a Muslim and be on the Olympic team or you cannot. In, hey, that's the rule. That's the rule. We made. Well, I, well, I, I think this is, uh, well, I, you know, what you can put in your own body that's not harming anybody else. To me, that's as fundamental as any religious belief that you want to have <laughs> and yes, to, to your humanity. So, I, you know, to me. Grasp, grasping at straws there. Uh, oh, I, I don't think so. I think that's the <laughs> fundamental 
part of being a libertarian oh, is that you uh, okay. just come down to your property right in your own body. Okay, and right. the government uh, has. We're out, out of time. Yeah, but as, yeah, a, sure. as, a pilot, as a pilot, as a pilot, I work for a private company, but we have to abide by federal rules. Those are come from the government. And one of those rules says we should not be flying under the influence of marijuana. Well, that so, impacts your job. Her, her, her taking marijuana does not no. impact her running. No, 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 no <laughs> you can't it's say a, that. No. It's a job. That well, it doesn't impact it right in, in a way that helps her to win. Right in an unfair way. So if she takes it, and then she most likely, if she's if it's hurting her, she's not going to make the team because she won't perform well. She's blowing past the competition. So I mean, whatever she's doing is yeah. working, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, if, if you're you're taking marijuana, that's probably not helping your your fly. No, no, <laughs> no. It, it wouldn't be. It, it would. But that's what they're t saying. The same thing. They're saying it's not performance enhancing. In fact, it reduces performance of her. And, and in spite of that, not because of it, but in spite of the marijuana use, she still blows by the competition. Imagine what she would be like if she didn't smoke. If oh, my goodness. It, yes. Yeah. Yes. So so here's the thing. <laughs> Once again, my job is not a right. I do not have a right to my job. I have the right to apply for it. I, but I have to earn that job by, you know, all the things I had, to, all the hoops I had to go through. So it's a privilege that I have this job. And if they tell me you can't be smoking wacky tobacco, then I'm not going to smoke wacky tobacco. That's just it. <laughs> well, well, I, I would agree with you. A, a private job, absolutely. Uh, unfortunately, Same thing. we're kind of <laughs> flown past our knucklehead <laughs> noise patrol. Yeah, we <laughs> are. <laughs> uh, you know what? Uh, Let's jump into our uh, one last topic before we get into this. On the same uh, item, uh, let me jump into another image here really quick. Actually, we won't even go to the image. Uh, the idea was uh, that, that there are also uh, transgender athletes now uh, as part of Team USA, and they literally have testosterone levels that are way above the other women. I, you know, And yet that's okay, mm. but the marijuana is not okay, apparently. But what do you guys think about that? I mean, is that okay for somebody to join uh, to compete against women when they just have levels that they'd have to be taking ridiculous amounts of drugs to get to i i do not believe transgender women should be participating in 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 female sports i really don't believe this because it's unfair okay men men are biological men biological boys are faster stronger and taller they have a natural advantage over these women and i think it's totally unfair to women to, to have them participating in their sports. Please, Tim, go ahead. I'm sorry. I don't want to take Yeah, Well, we're, we're at, up against the clock. And yeah, I, I agree. Okay, so let's have a separate uh, thing. They've got male, female, and transgender. And the transgender Olympics would, would have their own set of uh, rules and a whole, whole different uh, thing. There you have it. Okay. Well, in keeping with the rules, uh, we're just about out of time. So <laughs> in order to, to not get banned, uh, they, uh, I think we're going to call it at that. But thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, you know, we hope to see you at the next one. Until then, stay free. Thank you for watching the Knuckleheads of Liberty. Listen each week in Sacramento on Comcast Channel 17 for Knuckleheads of Liberty on Monday at 5.30 p.m. and the Libertarian Counterpoint Show on Thursday at 8 p.m. Also on YouTube, Facebook, and podcasts everywhere. We invite you to come again next week for the Libertarian Counterpoint Productions.